It's Joe and Lisa with Jolie Farms in Ecuador. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for joining us today. I want to thank everyone for subscribing, your likes, watching our videos. We're always just uh, so humbled that so many people have such wonderful things to say and we just appreciate all your support. We never imagined the channel would even grow to be this big. I mean, we're still a little bitty, but um, gaining some traction out there. We're Big Almost, for us. Yeah, we're about 1,500 subscribers. We never thought we'd reach that. Mm -hmm. We thought 1,000 would be impossible. But anyway, we're here. <laughs> so, uh, been a little under the weather. I, uh, we went to Podocarpus Park at the Loja entrance. Um, Podocarpus National Park, I should say. And uh, went last Wednesday. And uh, we went with Santiago and our friend Phyllis. Mm -hmm. And we drove up there and, and hiked for about two hours, up at about 9,340 feet or so, almost 9,400 maybe. And um, I was dressed about like this with just an overshirt, and it was probably 45 degrees and windy oh, and cold. Oh, it was so cold. And yeah, it was really cold up there, and so I got sick. Yeah, by Wednesday night I was yeah. fever and the whole nine yards, body aches. And so I've been battling that, and um, I'm finally today at a point where I can even talk very much without choking. <laughs> um, but here we are, we're gonna to talk to you about our trip to the park, yeah? Yeah, I think it's something that everybody should do. It's simple enough to go in, and they didn't charge. No, they don't charge, they open at 8 a.m., yeah. and I think they close at five? I think so. Yeah, so you gotta be out of the park by five or you're gonna camp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if they let you camp up there, but gorgeous gorgeous park worth worth stopping and going for yeah and you know at the loja entrance you can have a taxi take you up there if you want mm -hmm. um the drive from the main entrance there on the highway all the way up to the actual entrance of the park is a pretty good drive and there's some great pullouts along there where you can stop and take pictures of beautiful views oh um, yeah i think I, I was really surprised when we got up there, and you, you kind of need to drive up because it's way up there. Um, when you drive up there, there's uh, like three different hiking routes that they have at the top, and uh, they're, they're really nice. They're very well done and maintained, but um, you, I, the two different hikes that we took, um, you couldn't see hardly anything. It was just... You were in the, the forest part and you couldn't see beyond the trees too much. Yeah, it's like being in a jungle on the trail that we were on. Other yeah. trails are not like that, but we took a short trail because um, I'm old and feeble. <laughs> <laughs> As the last week of being sick has proven. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of scar tissue in the bottom of my left lung, so it's not real functional and um, I don't do well at that kind of elevation. So, um, and it's straight up hike pretty much. I mean, there's switchbacks, but it's like stair steps everywhere. They've mm -hmm. done a nice job of it. Um, and, it, you know, a lot of beauty and it really was cool. Now, yeah. one of the other trails would take you down to a lake, but that's like an eight hour hike, you know? Yeah, um, you pretty much got to be there when they open and yeah, keep moving. And keep moving. Yeah, that's not for us old, old people. No. Nah. But if you didn't want to hike, just driving up there in a cab mm. and getting a look at the views would, would be really, really cool. Yeah. Um, in the park, they have they have a lot of cool things. We didn't see a lot of animals or birds on our trip up there that time. In various parts of the park, you're going to see different animals. It's a huge park. Yeah, it's very big. I mean, it goes all the way down to southern Ecuador. What I say, it covers 565 square miles. Yeah. That's a huge park. It's huge. And actually, I think um, Santiago said there's a place in Malacatos where you can start up into the park. But he said that area is really hot. Um, so if you go, you might wanna go on a cooler day. But the rest of it, where we were, it, it was noticeably a huge change. You, you reached a certain elevation, it just got really cold. Yeah, it was really cold. Um, I don't know if that's just a particular day or if it's always that way up there, but uh, definitely was a cold day. We should have prepared better. <laughs> Stupid me. 
<laughs> well, all it does is make you hike faster you know, to try to warm up. Yeah, yeah. Or take a little bit more jacket would have been the right thing to do. But. Exactly. I mean, even my ears were freezing, you know, my Ooh. big ears were having problems. Yeah, so this thing goes, this part goes all the way, you know, to Peru. It's a, it's a huge part. It goes way south of Vilcabamba, even. And I'll put up a little map of that here. Well, and I will say, too, that we're in the dry season. And here, <clears throat> like, the grass is crispy and crunchy. And um, we're full-blown dry season. Up there, it was damp. It, was, um, it wasn't raining, but everything was damp. There was water. On, I mean, it was a sponge of water on the ground. Yeah, it's running off the mountains everywhere, yeah. seeping through the mountains. Seeping through little trails of water. I'm really glad our water comes from there. Yeah, and there's a, um, a waterfall there they call the Cascada de la Bruja, mm. or uh, Waterfall of the Witch. And uh, so it's got a couple pictures of that we'll throw up there. Itty Bitty Witch, though, because it was an Itty Bitty Waterfall. Yeah, Itty Bitty Waterfall. <laughs> We have much more dramatic waterfalls here in Ecuador than that particular little one. Um, but it is a waterfall nonetheless. And it is a dry season. And it is a dry season. But it was a beautiful place to visit. Um, would I go back? Maybe not on that particular hike, but I would definitely go back for the views. I mean, they were gorgeous along the way. And the pathways, just incredible pathways all the way through. Yeah. Really, I mean, they put a lot of effort into it. Really well done. They had a lot of full-time employees there, mm -hmm. you know, kind of taking care of things. So the Podocarpus Park is known as a mega diverse zone. And, and while well, I keep using that term diversity, there's just a lot of great fauna and flora in the park. Um, a lot of orchids and things. They do um, make you check in when you come in the front gate, you know, give some identification or something and check in and they take a picture of your license plate on the way out because people go up in there and steal the orchids out of the trees and stuff and it's damaging the park and they're you know they don't have as many plants as they used to have so they're trying to put an end to that and uh you know please when you go in there be respectful don't steal plants my goodness how low life can you be <laughs> of course i have to watch this one everywhere we go i didn't take anything <laughs> they were gorgeous but um they were really you know, you have to look at the climate up there and everything that grows, and it's just so lush. It's not going to grow in the dry zone, so don't even try taking it away. So, Yeah, and so the mega diversity there is just incredible. Um, they have, you know, all types of animals, and you name it, over 560 species of birds um, you can find in the park, and that's throughout the park. You won't see all that in one area. There are some designated bird watching areas that are supposed to be better than others for watching birds. Um, so yeah, definitely check that out if you're a bird watcher, that's a place to go. Um, it's also um, has the spectacle bear. Now I was disappointed he wasn't wearing Oakley's or anything like that. I really expected a more, no, we didn't see any bears. No, we didn't see any bears. But they had the spectacle bear there and they call him that because of the markings around his eyes. And uh, there have been bear encounters with uh, human beings up there before. Don't know anyone that's ever been hurt. There is a video on YouTube of some girls up there and they were real still and the bear came up and sniffed them and, you know, kind of walked around them and then left. So I won't say that they're tame by any means. Yeah. All wild animals are capable of causing damage to human beings. Yeah, and, and I think we saw just such a small piece of the park um, though we really, really enjoyed it, yeah, I would go back. It also, um, one of the animals there is kind of cool, it's called the northern pudu. Uh, it's, a, it's a deer, uh, about the size of a large dog. Uh, I saw my first one over in San Pedro, you know, less than a year ago, and that's the only one I've seen in my five and a half, six years here. But the northern pudu is kind of an interesting uh, deer. Um, so they do have those throughout the park, you know, you'll see them with the little tiny horns and kind of interesting deer. Yeah. And then uh, the mountain tapir, that's a weird looking animal, looks kind of like an anteater almost. Mm -hmm. um, it's also home to the jaguar, uh, the panthera onca. So they do have jaguars in the park. I imagine those might be a little harder to spot. Um, well, we saw them in the zoo. 
Yeah, at the zoo. Right here at the, the zoo. zoo. And they were hard them. to spot in the zoo. So. Yeah, that's true. They, they hide pretty well. They do hide very well. They say you'll never forget a jaguar scream. They scream like a woman. But um, I don't know. I scream like a little girl before myself. So, <laughs> But we just found the park really beautiful, very natural, pristine area. We ran into some... Uh, Ecuadorian women who are hiking up there, a group of four, five, six women. Now these women, they know how to hike. They had their bowl of popcorn. They were sharing as they go, just enjoying the, the beautiful hike. There's some great little areas to stop and have a little picnic, you know, on tables. Mm -hmm. And they do have restrooms up there, um, you know, scattered around the trails. Well, we found one log that you could actually sit on. They had it cut off at the top so you could actually sit on the log and take a break. Sorry about all my coughing. Mm. Having trouble. Still struggling to get through it. Yeah, we're filming indoors today because it's a little uh, misty. misty and rainy outside and I wanted to go ahead and get this done while I was feeling well enough and uh, so we could get this out to you and you could see some of the pretty pictures and video we took while we were there. Mm. And uh, it, it I, I tell you, it's don't pass this up when you come to Vilcabamba. Um, you know, if, if there's several cab drivers here in town that can take you up there and give you a great tour and um, definitely do that. There's a lot of mountain bike people um, who go up there. Chino at Chino's Bike Shop does a tour up there and he takes people on bikes. And so you can reach out to um, Chino if you want to go up there on a bike. Yeah, and if you want to really take pictures, I'm going to say early morning, if you can get there when they open. The sky was so crystal clear, you could just see forever. I mean, it was beautiful. Beautiful pics, and the way the sunrise was up over the mountains were lots of cool shadows. Mm -hmm. By the time we came back down out of the park, um, the, the light wasn't as good. Mm -hmm. We kind of lost that uh, golden hour, if you will. Well, it was kind of interesting because when we went up, we were just in awe. And then when we came back down, we were like, yeah, this is this was much better when we came up. Just the view itself was just incredible when we came in. Really nice. Well, I hope you folks will enjoy the pictures and uh, uh, enjoy the effort we put into it. It was about 250 <laughs> photos we took up there. But it's it's uh, it's a great hike. Take your time. It's a really high elevation, and it's worth going to. And dress properly. Yeah, take it. Take a extra jacket. All right, hope you folks enjoyed the video. Just tickle that notification bell, if you will, and then you'll be uh, uh, notified of our next video coming out. Hope you folks have a wonderful day. Ciao for now.